Welcome to the Breakthrough and Bloom podcast. My name is Kelsey Marks, and I am your host and your Breakthrough BFF. My mission in the world is to help women who are interested in spirituality really, truly understand who they are at the core of their being, guiding them through the process of healing themselves and really honing into what it means to be human. I intend to be an open channel to allow insights to flow in that help you break through to the next level of who you were always meant to be. With these conversations, we're going to shift some perspectives, okay? And we're going to give you a new way to live the life that you live, allowing the opportunity to truly manifest what it is that you desire. So if you're looking to break through to the next level of who you are, to live the life of your dreams, and to gain a deeper understanding of spiritual topics, well, you have come to the right place. And I know we're going to have so much fun together, and I am beyond excited to have these conversations with you. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another episode here at Breakthrough and Bloom. How have you been enjoying the podcast so far? Have you had a couple aha moments so far? Anything make you think about things maybe a little bit differently? I have loved the DMs and the comments from you guys on Instagram so far about how much you've been enjoying the podcast. And just thank you so much for reaching out. I love hearing what you guys love, right? (laughs) So today I wanted to talk about something that has been pretty common for me to talk about in my coaching and Reiki sessions, actually. Because quite frankly, I think one of the hardest things we all have to deal with, um, mostly because of the lack of information we're given about how to actually manage these things to begin with, is emotions. Understanding emotions, working with them, embracing them, and not letting them take over and dictate all of your decisions and actions. Like you're in charge, right? The emotions aren't the ones telling you what you're doing, when you're doing, and how you're doing it. And I've seen the whole spectrum of opinions towards emotions, either that, you know, that they're bad and they shouldn't be experienced and someone, you know, doesn't allow themselves to feel anything at all and kind of just dissociate in that way. I had done that. (laughs) Or the other end of the spectrum where it's like so heavily experienced that someone is basically losing themselves in the emotions and then maybe feeling regretful afterwards about the things that they did when, you know, the emotions were running really high. And it's important to note, too, that if you are experiencing emotions in either end of the spectrum like this, where, you know, you're, you're kind of in avoidance, you're not feeling anything, you don't allow yourself to feel things or show emotions or anything like that, or maybe you're on the other end of the spectrum of, like, feeling like a lack of control and you just, like, lose your cool or you just get really down on yourself, just know that there's nothing wrong with this if you're on either end of that spectrum. I literally went back and forth on this for years and i mean back and forth from one end to the under under from one end to the other dissociating on one end and then just like so in the emotion that i couldn't even think for myself like i went back and forth on that and, and there was no balance in between it was either one or the other and it was like that for years for me I would go months of feeling just like depressed of emptiness of like dissociating and then instantly switch to overwhelmed with emotions that I just couldn't control the things that I was saying or I was doing or how I was responding or reacting to situations like I was teeter tottering back and forth for a long time. So if you feel like you're in between or you're on either end or you're teeter tottering too, just know you're not alone and it's not a bad thing and you're not broken and there's nothing wrong with you, okay? (laughs) And if you feel like maybe you're digging in your heels a little bit when I'm talking about this, like, while I enjoy not having like really big emotions, okay? It lets me feel like I'm more in control or if I don't allow myself to feel too much, then I just never get disappointed, you know? Or maybe you're thinking to yourself, I love having big emotions. Like I love being outspoken and I love being loud and proud. And, and if I'm not that, then I feel like unheard and unappreciated. And you know what? That's all good too. What I want to speak about today is honestly just finding the right balance between the two, right? We don't want to live a life 
without any vibrance to it, we want to have the emotions, but we also don't want to live a life where we're not in control of the emotions. And we let like outspurt outbursts or anxiety or anger or depression kind of take over we want to find that happy middle ground right where we feel like we are actively participating in life and feeling the emotions and riding the wave of being a human being but not being taken over by that wave and we're literally the ones riding the wave and we're enjoying it right so just take a second to just think to yourself where on this scale that I had kind of painted for you. Where on the scale are you? And there's no judgment. Okay. It's just pure curiosity that we're asking ourselves like, hmm, where do I feel like I fall on this? Do I feel like I have a pretty good sense of control, but maybe in certain situations I kind of find myself snapping? Or do I feel like I retreat a lot into my inner world and just don't interact with others when certain things happen, like when I'm really stressed out? Just get curious. Just ask yourself and just know where you're at. And this isn't to be like, well, you're this far off from perfect or this far off from balance. Like, ew, no, (laughs) this is just for simple awareness because we can't change what we aren't aware of. And you're not going to realize, like, here's an analogy for you. You're not going to realize that you need a new roof on your house if you don't notice that it's leaking in the first place. You're not going to realize there's food that went bad in your fridge if you never open your fridge to cook anything. Just like some visual examples for you. We just want to become aware with no judgment. We just want to know what is going on with us internally and with our emotions. One of the first things that I learned regarding emotions that had absolutely changed the way I viewed them was this thing that I like to call the roommate analogy. So this analogy, it came to me one day and I wish I could tell you what inspired it. It was a couple years ago and I don't really remember, but it has been super helpful to not just me, but also to a lot of the people that I share this analogy with. So I want to share it with you so I can share it to whoever is listening. Okay. So imagine that you own this really beautiful, gorgeous home. And it's all yours. And you're the one who has the responsibility for its upkeep for maintaining it, right? You own it. And in this home, you have a couple roommates. And these roommates have lived in this house ever since you bought the home. It's just it's been what it is. And they live there. And together you all live and reside in this house together. Sometimes it feels pretty harmonious. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you fight or bicker. Sometimes you don't even like see each other for days or weeks at a time. But regardless, you all live in this home. And at the end of the day, the maintenance of the home, again, it falls on your shoulders, even though you have the roommates. But that's okay, because ideally, everyone is chipping in in their own special way, making life together work. Now, in this analogy, I want you to imagine that you are the homeowner. The house that you own in this case is, in fact, your body. This lovely human form that we each reside in are essentially our homes. And your roommates, think of them as your emotions and your thoughts. Just take a second to see each of these things as individual, yet combined, kind of like a fruit salad. There's you, there's the emotions, there's the thoughts, and there's the body, and you're all kind of like in this together, right? You can see clearly that there's the emotions, that there's the thoughts, that there's the body, and there's you. And this is why I say that you are more than a body. You're more than your thoughts. You're more than your emotions. Because in actuality, you are the observer of all of this, of how all of this comes together. You are the homeowner. You're the roommate. You're the caretaker of the entire place of everything that's within it. You're the one who's in charge. You're the one who's calling the shots. And now sometimes the roommates, they can get a little bit out of control, right? And sometimes the thoughts we have are racing and racing or they're demoralizing or sometimes they're just downright rude, right? And 
they're starting to destroy their room a little bit and maybe it starts creeping out into the house and it's just like mucking up the walls and causing all sorts of like gunk and junk. And sometimes the emotions are so loud that you can't even think. You're, you can't even watch your favorite TV show anymore. They're just blaring their music, screaming, slamming doors or, or something, right? Or sometimes maybe even the emotions are so quiet that you even forget that they're there. You're, you forget that you have them as a roommate. And this is where the house or the body might start to suffer. This is where maybe some damage is getting done to the house. Maybe it's been neglected. Maybe there's a bunch of things that are overgrown. Maybe it's just really dirty. Maybe there's just too much shit going on inside the house that it's uncomfortable to be there. And the thing is, as the homeowner... You are the leading roommate in this situation. You have the final say of what happens in the home. You have the final say that, you know, the emotions, you can't blare your music at 11 at night when I'm trying to sleep. Or emotions, you can't scream in the living room and slam doors just because you're feeling unheard. You know, you get to say that emotions, you know, you need to come out and you need to join the household dinner at least once a week. Uh, emotions you can't hide in your room for months or years on end. Like, I want to experience you. I want to get to know you. Um, emotions you can't be extremely messy when you come out of your room. Like, keep your room clean and don't make a mess when you come out either, okay? You have the final say that thoughts can't run rampant around the house, causing a mess and and wrecking havoc. You have the final say of what's allowed, ultimately. You decide how the roommates help you the homeowner. You decide how they help around the house, how they can chip in, and how they can help everyone find balance and, and happiness together. You decide if they can destroy the house or if they can't. And while most of the maintenance of the house falls on you, isn't it like so much easier to keep the house clean if, if your roommates aren't making it dirty? Isn't it so much easier to see what needs to be fixed when the entire place isn't in shambles or is like enjoyable to be in at least? Isn't it easier to take care of a home when there isn't anyone making a mess immediately right after you had just cleaned it? And, and here's the thing. You are not your emotions. The emotions you experience are simply residing in the same body as you are. They are simply the roommate within the home the home being your body, which remember, you are a multidimensional spiritual being having a temporary human experience. We are not humans trying to have a spiritual experience. No, we are spiritual. We are light and we are multidimensional beings. It's the truth of what we are. And what happens is we put like an aspect of ourselves into this like itty bitty human little form to experience some of the fucking craziest emotions and limitations that this universe has to offer. And you might be asking yourself, why the hell would I do that? Well, <laughs> because it is the absolute best way to learn and to allow our souls to progress at a really fast pace. And for me, honestly... The first goal before you can truly figure out what your life's purpose is, is to just get stability and clarity and harmony within the house, within the body, where you reside with these roommates that come with this body, with this house. And all humans, we, we all have this, okay? We all have emotions, we all have thoughts, and they're all within us all day, every day. And I would say that this is more important. This is more of like, I don't want to say your purpose, but whatever you like want to say you have to work on, you don't have to work on anything. But like, if you want a sense of something to work towards and you can't figure out your life's purpose, I'm going to tell you right now, your life's purpose isn't going to be able to come through to you and tell you what it is you're meant to be doing here if you're not balanced first internally. And when you're able to find the balance, when you're able to set the boundaries, when you're able to provide clear expectations to all that reside within the home, including yourself, that is when life starts to unfold for you. That's when you can start focusing on your mission. 
you've got to get the house in order before anyone can come over and like truly enjoy the visit, right? And the things you want to come and visit you are inspiration and momentum. And you want them to come and drop in and leave a little bit of them behind with you. But if your house is so full of stuff, how can inspiration and momentum come in and visit? And even though you're the one who's in charge and, and you set all the rules, you, you need to make sure you're not making it miserable for the, the other roommates okay your roommates are important very very important aspects of just being alive in general of being a human being it's what makes the human experience so unique we're not supposed to ignore them we're not supposed to ignore our emotions and ignore our thoughts or or you know lock them in their hypothetical room because that's going to make them cause absolute mayhem when they do finally come out or you might not even recognize them when they do. Or maybe you just don't even know how to feel comfortable around them because you haven't been around them. Your thoughts and your emotions. You can also imagine it this way. They're kind of like toddlers <laughs> in the house. They need some rules, but they also need to be able to explore. They also need to be seen. They also need to be heard, to be validated. You wouldn't let kids run the house, right? But you also want to make sure that they're happy and that they feel included and that they feel seen and heard, right? Like they're part of the family. And it's so important to pay attention to these things, to your emotions and to your thoughts, because they have messages for you straight from the subconscious mind, straight from that 95% of you that is in the background of the conscious mind on a daily basis. So remember, I said we're multidimensional beings that brought an aspect of their, their selves, themselves, ourselves <laughs> into these bodies. So it's like that. There's 5% of us that we can consciously bring into this body at any given point. So we can't ignore these parts of us in these human forms right now, okay? But we also don't want to let them run rampant either and dictate the way that the house runs. We're the ones in charge at the end of the day and we can decide what works and what doesn't work. And when we recognize that there is value in having emotions, that there is value in having thoughts in general, then it becomes easier to appreciate them, right? When you see that the value of the emotions is something from your subconscious coming up, it makes it more appealing to want to feel them, right? And it, it's so important to pay attention to them because they have those messages for you. And here's the kicker too. Just going to go back to the toddler analogy really quickly. Thoughts and emotions that reside within the human body with you, they don't want to be in charge either. Just like a toddler or a kid doesn't actually want to be in charge of the house. They don't want to run it and set all the rules, even though they might say they want to. What they truly want is just attention, connection, direction. They want an example to follow. Emotions and thoughts aren't meant to be controlled by a firm, like, white knuckles grip. Emotions and thoughts are meant to be experienced, to be worked with, to be molded into whatever feels good. And one of the simplest ways to remember that is that emotions are happening within you and are not you. You are not anxious. You are experiencing anxiety. You are not inherently depressed. You are experiencing depression. You are not an emotion. You are a consciousness experiencing it. And when you can see it from this perspective, then you can see it as, hmm, what is this asking me to see? What does this, this emotion show me about myself? Because again, the emotions are speaking from the subconscious. It's kind of like a kid being like, mom, 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 what is that? Be careful, be careful. It's the same thing. You don't ignore it when your kid's trying to, like, get you to pay attention. You pay attention to them. You acknowledge them, right? And even if they're pointing out something, 
that they're afraid of that you're like, no, that's no worries. Don't worry about it. You, you tell your kid, right? Like, no, this is okay. We're safe. Or no, you don't have to worry about that. Or, oh, why are you upset about that? Tell me about it. Right? Like we ask our, our, our kids these things, but do we ask ourselves these things? Do we care to be as emotionally intelligent as we're teaching our kids to be? And sometimes our old belief systems, like they come up and our, our beliefs, a, a way I like to think about them are just thoughts that you have a lot. So that's why I didn't say that beliefs reside within the body, because technically they're just thoughts that you have a lot. <laughs> and when these thoughts or these beliefs come up, you can literally tell it like, huh, this doesn't seem accurate anymore or this is no longer my truth. And you can rewrite it. But the thing is, you have to be aware of what it is. And in order to be aware of a limiting belief, you have to pay attention to the emotions and the repeating thoughts that come up constantly from an observer's point of view. So it's important. I say it's important to feel emotions. But what I really mean is it's important to allow your body to express emotions and it is important for you to feel it momentarily, but to not get consumed by it, right? Like we want to be able to feel it, to understand what it means to feel this emotion. But we we want to look at it from like a observer's point of view of like, okay, this emotion feels like this. And this is how I'm thinking about it. And what is this connected to? What story am I telling myself about this emotion. And I know you're probably thinking like, oh my God, this is like so <laughs> much questions to ask myself, but aren't you like talking to yourself in your head all day anyways? Aren't you having conversations with yourself anyways about how this is going to go wrong or how that person is thinking about you? Aren't we having thoughts all day anyways? Why can't we just <laughs> have thoughts that are more constructive? Why can't we just ask questions instead of just running rampant on tornado thoughts. You're you're thinking all day anyway, so why not make it useful? So it's really not that it's more work. I'm not telling you that there's more work to do. All I'm saying is just change the way in which you converse with yourself. Get more curious. Ask more questions. You're talking anyway, so let's just ask more questions. And a thing that I do too that you know, helps because we're not taking ownership of the emotion. We're not taking ownership of the anxiety or the depression or whatever. We're not taking it. We're not saying this is me, right? I am a depressed person. I am an anxious person. We're not taking ownership of it. And when you don't take ownership of it, you can literally tell it. You can tell anxiety or stress or anger or sadness, whatever it is. You can be like, hey, I see you. I appreciate you for coming up because you're doing what I used to believe was necessary for me to be safe, but I've got this. So for example, maybe you have been in a relationship prior that wasn't the healthiest for you, whether it was kind of mentally tough or maybe they were, I hope not, but slightly physical, not loving, <laughs> But let's just say, for example, you were in a relationship like that, okay? And now you're in a new relationship and the anxiety is coming up constantly when you're trying to observe your surrounding to be safe and you're trying to put things together of like, huh, this kind of looks like when this person did this. So anxiety kicking in gear. When you know that your partner sitting down at the kitchen table doesn't mean that they're going to start yelling at you, Right. Just because it was something that had happened in the past that you had made a, a belief or an association with doesn't mean it's the truth now. And that's what I mean in these situations where it's clear that it's not going to be happening again, but the body is still reacting that way, right? This is when you can like tell yourself like, okay, I've got this. We're not in the same situation as before. We're actually in a different place and we're really safe here and everything is a-okay. And thank you for the unnecessary reaction to this because you're just trying to keep me safe. I literally, I do this all the time. Not that I have a lot of like anxiety and things spike up that often, but if any anxiety or stress or anger pops up, I'm like, well, 
okay, that's not necessary anymore. Thank you for showing me. And thank you for showing me that I am still holding a belief here about this or a fear here about this. Thank you. But I've got the situation. We are a okay. Okay. It's kind of like parenting yourself a little bit. And when I do this and then I just take some like deep breaths just in and out, I can literally sometimes I can like feel like weight shifting off of my chest and my shoulders. I can feel my shoulders relaxing. I can literally feel like my body (laughs) declunking in a way. And it's so cool. And that's when I know like, ah, okay, body is on board with mine now. (laughs) We're on the same page. So just don't take ownership of the emotions. Don't take ownership of the thoughts. See them for what they are. See them as a co-inhabiting energy within the body and see them bringing up things from your subconscious mind that are ready to be integrated and healed. Use them to your advantage. Are you getting anxious about having a conversation with a friend? Why is that? What fear or story is at play here? Are you getting sad about an interaction that had ended poorly? Why? What about this are you taking to be true about yourself that maybe necessarily isn't? How can you change this? Are you getting angry at someone at the grocery store? Why? What about them is troubling you? What about this sounds like something either, you know, you do to yourself or you let be done to you due to lack of boundaries. I'm telling you guys, these, these negative quote unquote negative emotions that are just, you know, everyone like is like, oh, you can't feel that. You can't feel that. Yes, you can. And you should, because what these are are just like super energetically packed signs for you to heal something from the subconscious and the subconscious mind. It speaks in analogies. It speaks in metaphors. It speaks in emotions. It speaks in images and feelings and movement. And the conscious mind, you know, the one that we are aware of, the one that we're so focused on, the conscious mind is none of those things. It's logic. It's analytical. It uses actual language. It's data driven. It's it's like an art major and a math major just trying to hold a conversation together about their majors, right? There's just going to be a lot of things that get missed one way or the other. And at the end of the day, from like an animalistic point of view here, by design, an emotion is created to elicit a response from us. That's what it is. End of story. It's to elicit some sort of response. Whether it's to run from lions, to climb a tree from a hyena, to play dead to a bear... Like from a survival point of view, let's think caveman times here. These strong urges to do something make sense, right? (laughs) Because if we didn't have these urges, these emotions pop up so strong to tell us to do something, to fight or flight or freeze, we we would die. It's literally life or death. But we don't live that way anymore. We don't live in caves like that. But our bodies still respond in the same way to perceived threats. And while logically we know these threats aren't life or death a lot of the times, more of like a a comfort discomfort, the body, it's still reacting in the same way it always has. This is how signs are given to the conscious mind that we need to do something because the conscious mind, the 5%, it's taking in a lot of information, but can it take in everything? Think about it. Like there's 95% of us that's able to observe more that's going on around us. It would make sense that we would get feelings and things come up to get our attention, right? The sinking stomach, the heart racing, the whatever it is, like it makes sense that our body is reacting faster than our mind. So just remember, (laughs) you're not the emotion. You are the observer of an emotion. And a super strong emotion is simply just a sign or an indication from your body to do something. And if there is nothing to do, then you just got to let the body and emotions know that you are safe. 
You have to rewire the brain a little bit here. And we have neuroplasticity. We can absolutely do this. We can rewire our brains very simply, honestly, repetition. <laughs> That's what it is. And this is also where some parasympathetic regulation comes in super handy too. So you're able to get your body out of the fight or flight mode when it doesn't need to be in it. So along with telling yourself everything's going to be okay, it is super helpful to also know some things to get your body to relax, whether it's different breathing techniques, tapping, shaking, things of that nature. If you don't know what any of those are, I would say look up those three at least at least look up some simple breath works and some uh, shaking, which really is just like shaking. Think of like a dog after they get stressed out or they're having a lot of fun and they have a lot of energy. They shake, right? They shake it off. Literally, all animals do that. We are animals. You can shake off excess emotions too. <laughs> so moral of the story here, don't let your kids run the house, okay? <laughs> but make sure that the kids are happy living in the house too. Allow everyone to pitch in, allow the home to be harmonious, and allow the ability for yourself to keep up with the maintenance of the home by keeping everyone in check, right? And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, as always, please leave me a review on the podcast. This helps the podcast come up in searches for others as well to listen and enjoy. So we can just continue to like grow the community and help just so many people. And if you also want to reach out to me on the DMs at Instagram, that it's uh, at Breakthrough in Bloom, I'd love to know what you would love to hear more about. And as always, in case no one has told you this today, I am so proud of you. You're doing amazing, sweetie. And I love you. I love you. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. 